with my brother Isik, Milan, and Bellingham, Washington. <laughs> W-A-S-H, Wash. I, I don't know if they call it that. I, I usually call Washington, I, I'm in the wash. <laughs> In the like, they're like, nah, man. <laughs> that ain't really how does it, man? How does it feel to be out here, like after all these years? Uh, feels good. Uh, decades ago, training tact fit uh, certification under Scott Sonnen. Yeah. You know, they, and then now coming back to it, it is uh, quite humbling. Yeah, I mean, it tripped me out. Like it hasn't been that long for me. It's been like four years or whatever. You know, three. I don't know, three, four years. That's a good amount of time. Yeah, but like you go back into that tact fit room, you know in the Bellingham Athletic Club and where well, you know guys came from all over the world right to get certified you got certified right in the corner there and we're like looking at the, the little, little areas you know reminiscing right but it's like it feels like going back to your elementary school you know and, oh, yeah. and, and remembering like like you remember it being like so much bigger and then you're like you get there and it's like so small so small super small do you feel the same or not like, yeah man I, yeah. we were there uh like I said for the certification and you know and it was just so many people in there, and then you're just like, oh my God, intimidation. But then, uh, you know, you, you had a great time, and you're like, oh, that place, Bellingham Athletic Club, you know, and then you come back and you're like, man, it's pretty small. I didn't realize it was this small, but it holds so much value. Um, I could tell you that when I walked in, I think I mentioned to you, you know, I was like, I, I, I remember that one spot, and I, I, I can't, you know, get it out of my head, and it's just haunting me. So. Uh, when a place can haunt your mind from history of being doing what you've been doing at a place and location at that specific place, man, it, it carries on for the rest of your life. So yeah, crazy, yeah, Bellingham Athletic Club will always be a part of my life, stapled in my mind. I remember because you were able to look, look at the corner and you were doing your, uh, your uh, like whatever you, the exercise you're doing for the qual in that in that corner and then you're like you hurt your back in that corner and you remember that spot right oh, and dude. i remember i remember because i we were doing tripods and i couldn't put my hands on the ground mm -hmm. and the first cert and i just remembered like that spot you know yeah so it's kind of yeah just like that little area in the room so you kind of looked at it too like i was right there yeah yeah where it started you know and you kind of remember the it's kind of interesting right like the qual you remember like the you know because you're basically pretty much in the same spot in uh -huh. the room going through stress right pushing on the gas pedal uh, and he made you push the gas pedal. Yeah, and you're like, and you remember like actually that spot that you're in. Yeah, it's, you it's crazy, right? Very your place, crazy. your place in that room. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, especially when there's a lot of people in that small room, and all of a sudden Scott says, "Aaron Cruz is doing his tactic team leader test foxtrot," and then the whole room's watching him, just all around the edge of the room watching him. And Scott Sana following him and. You know, that, that, that is intimidating as hell. Like, I mean, uh, and that being in that little room, mm. that was the most intelligent design that could ever be a part of uh, anything really. Cause I mean, he, Scott Sonny has, he could take a small room mm. and put intelligent design in there. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fascinating. Crazy how much we could do, what he could do with that little room, huh? Oh yeah. 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 You get, get intimidated as hell. Yeah. If you know how to do it. Had, it was my first time really, really like checking out, being around like Bellingham. Was, it, was that your first time too, or did you, I haven't really you seen it before? No, I, I actually, you know what, I came to Bellingham. I went straight to the hotel where we did our certification for CST. Mm. I forget what the hotel was. Do you remember? God, it was like a Howard Johnson. Right? Howard Johnson, yeah. Something like that. All I can remember is when I did CST certification, we did our cert uh, in a place that had carpet. And so it was just kind of uh, an rooms. allergy moment for me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, carpet. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I, I, all I did was stay at a hotel. I didn't really go out. If I did, it was to eat, but mm. it was always after the search. So I was too tired to do anything anyways. Mm. But coming out here with, uh, with you, uh, we get to discover these certain areas that small businesses are all over the place here and they're open. Um, that's always good to see. And uh, the community is obviously supporting uh, the movement that's happening, Black Lives Matter, and they're showcasing it everywhere. But, um, other than all that stuff, we see life happening out here. And that's one ultimately mm. where we're like, okay, there's a sign of uh, hope. Yeah. You know? And that's good. Some, uh, so yeah, I was going to talk about the bar last night. So we shot, tech, you were the direct, you directed, mm -hmm. right? Tack for Firefighter 101 and Flowfoot 101, right? And so, uh, so uh, and then at the end of the day, right, the, the guys got drunk and they were, we did the interviews and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, 
T tell, tell me a little about the, the you know, because you've been working on the, the firefighter, you've been supporting that. Yeah, Firefighter 101 is going to be a little different than the actual 101 template to TACFIT. Mm -hmm. Because Firefighter 101, there's always um, something urgent, right? Where it's not like the general pop where, you know, we're, we go do our routine or we have friends interact, you know. And you know, Firefighter is like an urgent thing. So it's like we, they have responsibilities they need to take care of. They have to fund their own department. You know, they have to wash clean the department like this, their own house. It's like all these little things that add up, you know. So I understand that lifestyle is different. So when we did the one on one, we're looking at it as firefighters are so strong and so good at what they do that we can't just think that they're always Superman because or Superwoman because they're going to need some kind of recovery method. And I think that tack fit um, the methodology of what Brian Provenger, who actually built around all this firefighter 101 uh, did an incredible thing because now he's giving people access firefighters access to reclaim their body back you know have it back to when they first signed up to be a firefighter that one body that they really kept confident in and not only a broken body but a longevity process for them to continue the the, the passion they live for right for firefighters and you know and I and I think that going through the 101 Firefighter, Ryan Provenger, and also Elena uh, Sawaya. Uh, she's uh, incredible. Um, those two work very well together and putting in information for all the firefighters to understand the conceptual reasons of why they should train this formula because it's not really about fitness. It's about the lifestyle of training to get better with your body. And obviously, honestly, you've told me, and I've, and I've, and I've said it to many people, that this is science proven, science proven, not science based. And, and when you hear science based, science proven, people can uh, get confused with those two. But remember, proven is proven, based is, eh, you know, it's around there. So having Firefighter 101 be science proven because of Scott Sonnen really leading the way and pioneering these movements really settles it down for us now so we can pioneer for him. Yeah, yeah. It's just they, they can. I was going down memory lane with Scott when you were saying Scott Sonnen. and yeah. you know, um, um, like I, I like I, I was thinking of Viking Ninja, so I was my my mind went away. But Viking Ninja, like you did CST, you did Tac Fit, and then uh, and then you started doing Viking. You know, you you created your own like, you know, a modality with the with the mace. I was, yeah. I was thinking is the mace is the is the tool, right? Yeah. What is the difference? of your system versus like other people that have, you know, moved with the mace. So the different, yeah, difference, steel mace. So oh, steel mace. So difference between the Viking Ninja steel mace system versus others. And, you know, and I'll say this first, I don't know what other people do with their mace training, but I have not seen mm. what the, the, the value of the quality is being exposed. I don't see it. I don't see the quality of training the way it should be. I don't see, I don't see the integrity that, that, that's at its 100%. I see a lot of play. I see a lot of just do anything. I see a lot of freedom to do. Mm. Those are fine. But if you're looking to find the depth of the mace, to understand the training style and the reps that's supposed to give you these optimal mm. results, then you're, you're not doing enough. And so with Viking Ninja, that's what we do. We dig deep, but we mm. dig deep safely. And if we dig deep safely, you continue digging deep. And the deeper you go, the more you know. That's it, right? That's mm. it. Yeah, that, I remember you were talking about Scott Sana and my mind, like, I, uh, it was about flow fit, you know? Mm -hmm. We did the flow fit 101 as well yeah. with Elena and stuff. and. Uh, uh, Talk to me about your, your flow fit experience, you know, and talk to me what, like, what it means to you. Flow fit experience has been uh, humbling way more than the club bell. You know, the club bell, you put a for tool me in too, your hand. For me too, like the body weight was the hardest. Oh, it's the hardest. Yeah. You put a club on your hand, you're like, okay, I could try to figure this out. But when you have to rely on your own body to do a movement that requires, and this is, looks like a simple movement to do, but it's so complex uh, when you register and activate in. It blows my mind. So when, when I learned the flow fit style a long time ago with Scott Sonnen, 
um, I got hooked. I, I, I knew what he was trying to do with this formula. Mm. There's a strong uh, strength performance uh, to it, but then there's this thing where there's low intensity mm. and it's supposed to carry you through like uh, recovery restorative. Mm. And it's amazing, right? You could take your body and recover or create strength. And here we are in the middle thinking we need weights to get us to where we need to be. Yes, we can get big, but that's temporary. You don't want temporary process. You want, you want a permanent process. You want to densify the body where it's safe enough to say, hey, look, I'm not losing my muscle tissues at uh, an alarming rate. I'm not destroying my joints in an alarming rate. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to maximize my potential through technique and performance. So that's about it. Yeah. Lifestyle is really, really... And then like the breath, right? Like connecting your breath. Breath, number one. And you know, that's so funny because I said everything except for breath and breath was number one. Breath is number one because you ever, you know, you're born. What happens when you don't first breathe? Thing, yeah. Slap your butt. That's the first thing you want to hear your breath. And so, you know, without breath in life, you know, I have this eye watch, right? And if I'm sitting working on my phone, I get a buzz and it'll say breathe. I'm like, oh my God. Really? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, so I'm just sitting here like, Oh, it gives, you, it gives you notifications? Yeah, it gives me notifications. I'm like reading on my phone and I'm like too into it. I don't breathe and I'll say breathe. And then you're just like, wow, how many times do I do I that know, I in life? That. How do I do that? How many times do I get stuck on something and not breathe? That to me is not conditioning uh, effect, uh, efficiency mm. with, my, with my lifestyle. So like what I was saying to myself was, if I'm going to look at this phone, I'm going to breathe because... If I get that message again, I'm not going to like it, you know, because usually I'm really good at things and I want to do things with my phone or whatever. But if it's going to be an unhealthy thing, I start to get in my head, you know. So, yeah, but I watch. It does that. Nice. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. You know, like I think about flow fit and of course, like my restrictions, like moving. And then when, when you start to read the flow fit manual, you know, like Scott talks about the endocrine, immuno, immuno, you know, of course, uh, what is it called, uh, um, uh, what's the nervous system, Neuro, neuroimmuno endocrine uh, response, you know, like oh, it's I all in so. there yeah, yeah. with the movement and how, you, you, how you're shaped, you know, and so you release and you, you know, basically increase your immune system, just, just the flow throughout your body, right, your health, your vitality, you know, um, I mean, it just, it just blows my mind because we were doing the full foot one one, so I was reviewing some of the things, you know. Yeah. And uh, it just trips me out, just how much, I don't know, I guess research and just how he's applied it more than importantly, right? To get yeah. the results. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, you know, I, I've, I've taken uh, what Scott uh, called flow back in the day, still calls flow now, but yeah. what it was back in the days when I learned was to find both, both parallels of recovering and finding strength, that conditioning, that, that restorative method. And to me, I, I found an addiction and I couldn't get away from that. So what I did was I implemented a lot of strength work and then I, and then I got a little taxed out. Then I said, okay, let's see what if I can do the recovery work by implementing a different volume, a different integration, you know, a little more patient rather than in a hurry. And it worked, it worked. It, it's, it's insane how much it works. And, so, you know, most people out there will say, yeah, I do body weight. Yeah, I do this. I do that, you know, but at the end of the day, you haven't tried. If you haven't tried tack fit, you're not going to know exactly what recovery is for the body. Literally, if you don't go to tack fit and just try it out, you won't understand the methodology of breathing right, performing right and living life right. I mean, literally, it all carries over. So. That's my high recommendation for everyone. Just I highly recommend you all try TacFit because it is a game changer and a life changer at yeah. the same time. Like sales sales guys, right? For yeah, the, yeah. Which like you, I mean, you're a, you're a US director. Yeah. And also the you know created Vacuum Ninja, but you for TacFit, right? Yes, sir. A North America US US director. Yes, sir. And uh, what does that mean to you after you know you know just being in the system all these years? What did it mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. I mean, I know before when you gave me the title, it meant uh, so much, like a, a good feeling, new feeling. Mm. The fact that I'm in here and uh, we're doing this and you're, you're asking me on an update how, how it feels to be 
in my position, I, I, I'll tell you, it's, it's a dream come true. Um, you know, it's given me the chance to um, not just be creative, you know, it's given me the chance to reach out. Given, you, you've given me the, the road to mm. say, hey, I trust you into going in that road and, and doing what you got to do. And then when you come back, I know what to expect when you come back. And you know what? Like, um, it's been what I've been doing already for so many right. years. And for you to recognize that makes me a successful director because you did that. You <laughs> know what I mean? So, so it's, yeah. man, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a, it's a dream come true for, for me. Like, I think for all of us, you know, involved, you know, it's like it was meant to be, you know, with all yeah. the stuff you've done. And yeah, I don't know. It was Aaron Cruz, right? That, uh, yeah. That uh, put us together. It all for me, yeah, man. yeah. He's uh, so started off for you, but then also I remember you put, giving a shout out to him, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, and then yeah. Uh, and then uh, me reaching out to you, and yeah. when, when it's right, it's right, right? Right. You reached out to me in the in the nick of time too, because you know I was developing something outside of Viking Ninja. I had a I had a business partner per se that I was going to do some business with, and he stole me away. <laughs> this is a good thing, man. Because, you know, I didn't know which way I was going. Right. And honestly, like to say, I know that my heart is intact fit, but I want to do this, but I want to do that. Yeah. But it's like, it's not going to work. you got to come back in attack fit. Yeah. That's where the roots Well, man, are. it's like it's Dream Team, attack fit, CST, you know, we're doing all the club bell, like yeah. flow fit, uh, into flow. I mean, we're doing it, right? We're doing all the, the things. And then you have the Viking Ninja brought the... You know, we're going to do Attack Foot Mace one one yep. soon, coming out this next month. That's exciting. Um, and uh, and then you have all these lanes in that Viking Ninja. You know, yeah. we talk about, you know, like uh, like uh, nunchucks yeah. and bow staff. And, uh, you know, the, can you just talk about some yeah, of the programs like, that we have? So Viking Ninja is going to have a lane of one-on-ones just like Tech right. has with online training. So it will be a little different. So that way the concept really attacks the uh, fitness and martial arts discipline, mm -hmm. right? Putting discipline in fitness and martial arts uh, concept. Nunchucks, it's going to be basic. It's going to look complex, but it's going to be easy to do. And it's going to wire your brain in to understand how to mirror each side. Maybe you're, you're so good with your right hand. You know, you throw a football hard with your right hand, but you can't throw it with your left. And it's just so embarrassing when you do it. That changes where you can throw your football that way and throw your football with the other arm. The bow staff helps you understand more rotation because now instead of a chain swing in the chain, you have a long staff and the end of each staff is like a, it's a lever. So you have to really understand rotation well to, to, to manage that, the levers. But it's wooden and it's light, it's not like a mace. So you're able to create joint rotations efficiently so that way, if you have bad joints, you can do that and go into to a steel mace training. I see. If you're looking to densify and trying to get real tight into your uh, structure, trying to own just structure, you go into uh, nunchucks because you start moving around dynamically, but you're staying postured. Your posture stays. So therefore, like if you do a 360, you understand that method. And... Um, you know, still and then you go if you want to go deeper into the mace, right? So we're gonna have yeah. mace, the mace, mace academy, and mace things coming up. Yes, yeah, so still, coming, coming on, on on its way, right? Yeah, yeah, still mace academy coming on its way, and that's big part of TACFIT, you know. And um, with that academy, obviously, it's next to the TACFIT uh, education system. Of course, system. yeah, of course. And and we just want to let people know that you know, with this uh, system we have with TACFIT and still mace, it's. Uh, it's the same methodology. We got, we got you. We got you covered, huh? All bases covered. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And and thank thank you to Scott. Uh, and I won't stop saying that because that because Viking Ninja wouldn't be Viking Ninja without him. Straight up, he's pretty much Viking Ninja. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's a perfect fit. Yeah. You know, uh, um, we you know Viking Ninja. Uh, I'm really excited about you know you're kind of re, we're redoing like a, like the the Viking Ninja yeah, things right the belt the for, re, uh, we reforming call it? reforming reforming yeah, reforming, yeah. Uh, for next year I'm really excited about next year and these things that we're gonna have right yeah uh, but there's a belt system right yeah and we always talk we always talk about like tactical right it's like a way of life and uh, 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 you know you you kind of you know you, there's like level one level two like you know senior level the team leader right and uh, I just 
I, it just, it's like a martial art, right? Yeah. It's a total martial art. It totally is. And so for Viking Ninja to have like a belt system, like, man, it's like, that's what's up, you know? It's, it's, really the per it's perfect, right? So I'm really excited to kind of help uh, just be a part of that, you know, and contribute. Oh yeah, not just help, but you are a big part of that because, you know, you're gonna be brains of operations for that type of uh, belting system. Yes. Yeah. Who better than the master himself, yeah, the man. legend, Alberto Crane. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it's a martial art, you know, this training, this yeah, type of man. training, and so it's in that own lane, and then you you do your, you know, your all your stuff, and it's yep. just perfect, you know. It's like you there's levels, right? Absolutely. There's levels. And when there's levels, you know, you, you you ask, and some people ask, what's this belting system? Why is it necessary? Continued education, but discipline levels mm -hmm. and accountability. So then people start to understand, oh, you're putting discipline back into fitness because fitness full of ego. That's right. Kill your ego. Challenge yeah. your discipline. So you have the technique, right? The technique. Yeah. And so, you know, level of, level of sophistication, right? Yeah. Level of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, simple compound complex, right? Yeah, yes. yes. And, then, uh, and then, of course, like the weight, right? Probably, mm -hmm. you know, and of the tools, right? Master of the tools. And if your technique is not there, you're not going to be able to no. move that, the heavier weights. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people... Which isn't about. It's not about it's that. Not it's about, about getting the technique and then the rest will come, right? You bring a good point on that because people will pick up a weight, say like they'll pick up a... So like they say like a kettlebell guy will like, oh, 32 kgs, easy. So when they see a mace, they're like, oh, I'll take a 25 pound. It's like, well, it's a different monster now. Let's not just uh, think you can handle 25 pound because you can handle 32 kg. It's not about the weight, mm. right? I've seen a man strong as hell you know he just the perfect body you know he like so so strong picked up a 10 pound Mace. swung mm -hmm. it and fucking fell to the side he fell to the he side fell to the side i literally looked away because i did not want to laugh and i did not want to be an awkward conversation but when he got up he literally just stared at it and just kind of like thought to himself, man, this thing, this thing took me down. It's not about the weight, you know, Ben Askren, you know, Ben Askren. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Andrew Craig, one of my good friends, um, ex UFC fighter, he yeah. gave him a mace, 15 pound. He showed him what he can do with it. Mm. Gave it to him, fell down. These people are falling down because the structure is not there. They're thinking upper body and the low body. But how, how are they, they're swinging it? They're doing like a 360? They're doing 360 and they fall down. And they fall down. Because, because they lose their balance? They lose their balance because they, the 50% of their body they forgot. Mm. They thought, I'm up here the whole time. They thought they were a hot air balloon. Until the lever went down towards their hips, which is low body, and swung mm. that way to get them out there. Now, I think you believe in, in what, I, uh, what I'm going to say here. You manage their hips, you're going to manage them pretty well. Right. right? So that's what that weight does behind you. It takes you that way. And, um, you know, to build resiliency from that, to, to rep out structure, because this thing is taking you out of structure, trying to, and you're just repping 100 each side. Say, for instance, you did a high intensity 100 each side and you owned it. It feels good. It feels good. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, so many things going on. Like, tack fit, I'm doing all these things with tech with all the one-on-ones and just that furthering education things, yeah, right? Yeah, Nestor, yeah. Nestor, our, our educational director. Nestor is the man. Yeah. And uh, ha having our online certification, right, coming yeah. up, uh, um, I think October now, yeah, it starts? Yeah. Our first one, like people are wanting to have it for, for a mean, while. Yeah, 10 plus years, but we never wanted to, you know, like we wanted to keep the, the quality and the integrity, right, really right. high. But now with the pandemic and the, you know, the, the lockdowns and stuff, we kind of don't have a choice, right? We have no choice. And, but to proceed and, and Nestor has been, you know, he's done six successful, I think six, high progressive. It's like a, right, a, a, a movement with your breath apnea, like a system. It's like a lot of diaphragm. Right, 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 like abdominal cavity. It's about the Correct. abdominal cavity. Um, 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 work, it's super, super technical, super yes, hard, right? Yes, And he's been successfully able to, you know, teach or certify people in that, you know, and, and, uh, at a high, like a very high level, and he says even better than the regular in-person certifications. Wow. So I think it's gonna be a game changer. I'm really excited about that coming up. It's in October, you yeah. know, so we're gonna, 
uh, you know, start, start, you know, getting the word, just, you know, connect the community, right? And get the word out. And I'm um, just excited to just have that peace, you know, now and in to, play. Yeah, to be, be ready to go when that time comes. Because even when that time comes, we're doing classes now, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing Wednesday classes on uh, Facebook On Facebook, Live. right? You're going to be doing uh, this Wednesday, right? This Coming Wednesday, up. yeah. Uh, this Wednesday. So this 10, 10 a.m. Pacific time? Yes, yeah, right. Every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And it's with our... It, the first one's going to be on the op uh, open page, open... Yeah. Uh, the, on, the, on, the, on the public uh, the, face, TACFIT uh, Facebook yes. page. So it'll be the TACFIT Facebook public page. So and then the next week, it's going to be on the closed? Yes. Yeah. So... What we're doing is we're trying to tell people on the TACFIT page that yes, it's going to be on the CST TACFIT uh, private page. Right. So we have that TACFIT page, it's public. CST TACFIT uh, is going to be a, a private page. So when, once we launch it on there, um, the, the public page, that's the only time we're going to do it for the first run. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, look, it's going to be on the CST TACFIT page and don't worry, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be marketing it that way. But what's good about these classes, you have our team leaders, Matt, Robert, Aaron, myself. Uh, but I think these three tech team leaders are very special. Mm. Uh, they have a skill set that they, they all share, but they're same difference. And I think everyone can benefit from them. Robert Miller, if you haven't followed Robert Miller, the guy is incredible with the club, extremely strong with the club bell. You need to follow him. Robert Miller, Tackfit. Look at Aaron Cruz, king of mobility. Mm -hmm. And Prasara Yoga into mm -hmm. club bell mobility. Gets very creative with all the joint stru uh, joints and structures of the, uh, the body. A, he's the best to, to, to learn from. Aaron Cruz. Then you have Matt Weiss. Matt Weiss Wiss, is awesome. Wiss Wesser. Mm -hmm. Wiss, yeah, I call him Matt Weiss. I call him Because of his Facebook, yeah, because yeah, we always, Wiss. that's why I, I call him that too, yeah. Yeah. And Matt, he's, he, the guy literally does BJJ tack fit every day. Yeah. And, the, the, and, and, and that to me, I give him maximum respect because I've known him for so long. And for him to continue doing what he's doing with that, so much respect. And you know what? The knowledge is there because we recorded him Spesnaz. Yeah. And he was Which he phenomenal. beta tested, right? We talked about on the on the previous podcast. Yeah, he beta tested everything. So it's pretty everything. cool. It's pretty so, cool. The original one that's you know Scott Sana did. Correct. So for him to do like the one on one, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's pretty cool. And we have a badass team. I'm like, you know, I'm so proud of these guys because they're so badass. Like we have a good collective team. And not only the team, we have a badass community. Look how badass our community, and then yeah. the, the tactic community. It's just so, they're so good people. I just love every single one of them because the heart, you could, you could see it. You know, the post, they write the, how they post and, and they wanna interact and they wanna activate and stimulate the, the, each other. That's so beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's the be most beautiful thing to see. So, you know, I, uh, I'm happy. I mean, We're everyone moving. out there doing their thing, I'm happy. It's just really good. We're moving fast yeah, yeah. with a lot of things. A lot of things coming up, right? A yeah. lot of things coming up. Maces, kettlebell, you know, kettlebells, uh, all the one-on-ones, right? You know, now with Firefighter, right, project, the Attack Fit Firefighter yeah. one-on-one project, and, of course, the, then going into the Attack Fit you know, Firefighter lane, right? Got, I'm actually wearing the shirt here. Yeah. We got the new logo. Yeah, we right? wouldn't we wouldn't have this if it wasn't for you though, right? So you have to understand. No, we like, got the it's a, it's a team, right? It's a team. We got, it's, it's a team. It's, it's a team. A team, team. But, but but for your, I'm just lucky to be around all these like crazy talented people. Yeah, you but, know? but you being part of the team, your heart is huge. Like we 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 honor your heart and your spirit in this because like no one can even match that. So you're your sensei, you're your legend. Yeah, thank you, you know? Thank like, you. Literally, I know you don't like hearing this stuff, but <laughs> I just it. want you to know from my heart, it's literally <laughs> the you, truth. You thank know, you. like you, you gotta, you gotta. Uh, I feel lucky because I'm, 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 I'm just like, I'm just a fan, man, of all you guys. You that's know? crazy. I feel like you guys are all, you guys are all like superheroes I, to me. You know, that's so crazy to kind of just it. be able to be, just to be a part. You yeah, know, I mean, is, you know, uh, is, uh, you know, it's an honor, really. Because you say that, and then we say that we're a fan of you, and it's just, you know, <laughs> I guess it works, you know? It just works. You know? Just, I love jujitsu and, uh, and tack fit, and now Viking Ninja, it just makes it better. Can I ask you a question? Mm hmm 
you know, I've watched all your films. No, but not all of them. Most of them, the ones that I could find on YouTube. Mm. I've watched all your fight films. I've 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 uh, heard your corners. You know, I've just really observed. You mm. know, because you've done your history with the the fighting and stuff. Coming into TACFIT, what made you change to be such a very steady, calm? It's all good, no problem. Because the fights you <laughs> you were into. Yeah. They're not like the fights nowadays. There were no rules. So being a part of that life and then coming into a life where it's it's about health mm. versus to you know punish what maybe change, right? What yeah, maybe what change? Made you well, change. you know, you know my multiple sclerosis Bes story. Besides that one. Like, besides that, you yeah. know, uh, um, I think I mean it was just like besides the MS, it just you know, all the injuries and the lack of mobility and I don't know if it was from the MS or uh, we know, like you, you, you fight, you train, you compete, like you get dinged up, you know. But it was that culmination, and I knew, I knew, I needed some, I need to change something, right? Right. And I think, I think for me, uh, just meeting Scott all those years ago, I think it was like 2007, you know, so 13 years ago. Man. It just opened my mind up to yeah. possibilities that I never thought of. You know, I was like, who's this guy? Like taking notes and you know doing these different movements, you know. And uh, and uh, and I think subconsciously I planted that that seed, you know. And then when I when I was diagnosed with that mess, and then just all the injuries culminating, it kind of like it brought me back to that. My sub, you know, I just I just I brought me back to that. And uh, and uh, it's just not sustainable, right? To go like hard, for, and that's yes, it's not sustainable. And so I think it, I've definitely shifted. Well, fighting also, right? Yeah. It's it's. Uh, how do I say it? Like, like, it's much more. I would say fighting is much more than fighting, but you know, like martial arts. I guess for me, it's the same with martial arts, jujitsu. It's more than just competing. You know, yeah. Like you talk, we talk about way of life, right? And uh, and I think it's it's about living your best life. You know. Oh yeah. That and so like just being more mature when you're younger. You're trying to prove that you know you're you're you're, you're the somebody, best and yeah. you're somebody. You're trying to prove you know trying to prove. And so I was younger. That was that that was that time. You know, um, but now. I'm definitely shifted into, you know, living my best life and helping others do the same, you know, like human optimization. Which is great. And, uh, and I think jujitsu for me, that's, you know, number one, right? That my martial arts background. Uh, so martial arts for sure helps that. But to live your best life, to optimize yourself, like mm -hmm. your body, your brain, your spirit, you know, you need like, you need the systems, you need, you need tact for Viking Ninja. You need to do that to have that ingrained into your uh, martial art training. I agree. It really, it really completes the circle. It really completes the circle. And, uh, and I, you know, like when you asked me like what changed it for me, I just knew subconsciously that was the way. And then when I started to do the reps in the certifications, which you do a lot of, oh, right? absolutely. And I did, you know, right, Matt Whistler started told him like 51 workshops and certs because I wrote it down and I counted them all out, you know? <laughs> and within a few years, right? And that's around the world. And things started to change, and you know, I I don't want to keep bringing up the MS thing, but like, man, I had a hard time talking, you know, I had a hard time walking. I couldn't put my seatbelt on in my car. Yeah. I could still compete because my nervous, I would get so excited that my nervous system could kick in. kick in, and I could do it. But the rest of the day, I wasn't, you know, I couldn't move. Everything hurt, you know. So the accumulation of the injuries, you, you knew that was not is going to a path of danger. Uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't dangerous. sustainable and. Man, like we do martial arts, or we do sports. Like, I mean, it's to be happy, right? It makes you happy. Like you make, you know, you. It's just about happy, happiness, right? Yeah. And that, which in turn, you know, it's it's your potential, right? You're making yourself happy, making others happy around you. Like you know, tapping into something bigger than yourself. Yeah. Um, so I I get this I get the same thing that I get from jujitsu, the same feeling of tapping something bigger than myself. In, in so I get I get that in Tacfit and you know in Viking Ninja you know nice. so I get that you know I get that whatever connecting the breath with the movement having the correct structure it just allows me to do that you know to really tap into that into that quantum or whatever you want to call it you know how does it feel to be accepted more and I and I and I say more because I I don't I don't know you know I don't know jujitsu but I've noticed. 
how how does it feel to be accepted by different jiu-jitsu schools like your name mm. because i i go i train 10th planet and now they like they know who you are they mm. want to do tack fit you know and they want to make it a tactic you know, you know man i, I love like, it you know i love it because you know i think I'm a more I'm more independent. Right? I'm legacy Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so I'm not you know affiliated with like the like a oh, bigger they're... kind of a association. You know, I'm my own association. Right. Um, but it allows me to connect with like people on the human. We can we can take away that the politics of yeah. that part of the associations and Lin, you know whatever that is. You know, uh, oh, you know I've been around so long. Like it's about the person, right? It's about the people. You know. And so it's just, it's beautiful because it allows me to access other teams. It allows awesome. me to, you know, it's just such a gift, you know, that's why I just kind of go, going back to, you're like, you're like, oh, like, I'm a legend, I'm this, I'm that, you know, but man, it's about you guys, man. You guys are like, you, you guys are allowing me to do this. Yeah, but you know? do you, it's because of your guys' work. Yeah. Me getting inspired by all you guys, you know, that uh, I'm able to improve myself and then help all those around me. And I want to, I want to give everything I have towards this, 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 this way, you know. That's because I, 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 I believe in it for, you know, for the world. I knew it. I knew it. That's your heart. Your heart's just like that too. And you know, one thing I think, and, and I'm sorry if I'm asking you questions, but I think it's so good. We're hanging out in Bellingham, yeah. Washington, right? <laughs> at the at the Leo. Shout out to you, Leo oh, the Hotel. Leo Hotel. <laughs> We're in the in the Leonard Hotel in the, in the right? lobby, right? It's a, what is this place? The social lounge. Social, social lounge. lounge. Social it used lounge. to be. It used. It's really. It's a. Uh, it's really. It's pretty cool. It's like from the 1920s. 1920s. Right? Yes. 1920s, and then it was like a, a ballroom. A, a, old, like a, a assisted living, old, yeah, yeah, senior yeah, living you place, you know. Um, and now they redid it and renovated it, and uh, we're we're here now, you know, enjoying mm -hmm. like the downtown Bur uh, Bellingham and the scene right around the scene here. Scene is awesome. Sorry to go into that tangent. What were you saying about? No, I'm just saying, you know, you have this thing where you're in a very unique position. Um, I've noticed specifically when you put out the uh, Grappler's Toolbox 101. Mm. That's perfect for jiu-jitsu. I mean, you know, I don't do jiu-jitsu, but I do movements that are conceptual. Mm. And believe it or not, I actually get jiu-jitsu athletes to kind of move their body differently to, to, to escape, counter, whatever it is. Because, you know, being unfamiliar with your own body, you kind of just, you're going to get messed up. But with you, you have this Grappler's Toolbox 101. And what it does is it kind of makes these jiu-jitsu guys or athletes find problematic areas. When they find problematic areas, they learn to kind of just breathe in it just get out of it don't hold your breath tense your body because now you're trying to like avoid what you're supposed to be facing um for you what do you think do you think the jiu-jitsu community because i do thrives off tack fit to not only optimize your strength but to to recover and restore them to yeah. go back and have a long time of training jiu-jitsu and competitions yeah, I mean, that's that's it, you know, right? That's exactly it. Like, you know, like I always say like the same kind of things. I'm like a broken record, you know, but uh, of course it, it increases your performance. It helps you recover yeah. from injuries, but also prevent injuries, right? And so what does that mean? That means you're, it's sustainable training, right? right? It prevents all these things, all the bad stuff from happening. So you can, you're able to train more, longer, better, right? Yeah. And so of course you're performance is going to increase but also prefer, uh, increases your your sure capability your movement capability yeah. right because uh, it's all the you know this neural stuff that we're doing right even it's the application that we're just telling you what you know applied like neuroscience pretty much right um, um, so so I guess what was your question on that well then, I mean on that you already kind of tested uh, the, the one also is you know I, 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 I trained well, if it's good for the for the, you know if tack it's good of course yeah of course you know preventing preventing uh, recovery, right? And yeah. So recovery, not just from injuries, but also from hard training, right? Correct. And knowing how to breathe, right? It just helps. It improves you, you know, and improves you. So like 100%, right? And so when I did the Grapples Toolbox 101, uh, I guess that was my my intent, my intent, right? Because I'm always thinking like as a grappler, as a you know, jujitsu, but you know, overall, I think as a complete athlete or a complete um, 
and a person, you want to be strong, right? You want to be strong, you know? You want to be strong, but you also want to be mobile. So you want to yeah. have that balance of being strong and have the mobility. Yeah, trying to be stable, mobile, and strong right? at the same time, right? right? So, so I think that's the goal, right? And then uh, TACFIT allows you to be, keep the mobility, stay, keeps you, it makes you strong, keeps right. you strong, you know? So it allows you really to, to, to be ready, you know? Like I feel like I can just do TACFIT and I can be ready to, you know, to do jiu-jitsu, to compete whenever, wherever. Oh, you, you love jiu-jitsu. How, how would you tie that into jiu-jitsu communities? I don't understand. I understand as, far, as far as what? The, the, the tactic. tactic? Yeah, because I mean, I understand. I think, I, think, uh, I think the way I've done it, right, because I've been doing it now for over four years in my gym, you know, and so just little bite-sized, right, little bite-sized things, you know, and that means like doing some of the interflow, maybe as a warm-up here and there. Uh, we definitely do some like a little Pissar yoga flows, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, flow fit kind of, right, six degree flow right, right. Uh, things before class, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and we always compensate at the end of class, you know. Nice. So it's very similar. It's very CST, very tact fit, right? That's, I mean, health first, right? Health, health first. first. And op I'm optimizing like the jiu-jitsu for, for life, right? right? So you're not... You know, 30 years old walking with a cane. Correct. I mean, you should so be that, that, that's with my intent. I just when I when I teach now, of course, we have competitors and guys that compete and and, and want to do that, and I support like every aspect. But um, I want everybody to be their best, right? Yeah. And that means I believe in jujitsu as a way of life. Um, and I think the way, I mean the way is like tack fit, you know, with that, you know. So uh, I mean that's all I talk about. So you know, it's you know. <laughs> well, let me give you a, a, an overview. Well, not really an overview. I'll give you a little story here. Well, you know, I <clears throat> when I first went to the 10th Planet, yeah, um, you know, they wanted the Viking Ninja, but I, I said, you know, you guys really need pack fits. Really, where Viking Ninja came from? Mm. Okay, yeah, bring it in. They don't really know what it is, right? But when we do these movements, presenting them, just presenting them, looking, right. then they're looking at me like, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Uh, and then they do it, and it's a bigger deal. You know, let me go, let me go back, right? Yeah. How, what was my introduction to tack fit? Did I ever tell you that? No. I need okay. to hear that. So, uh, you know, I, fought, I did my UFC debut. Yeah. And, uh, and I got tired, you know. Really? Uh, like uh, halfway through the first round, I think. I just, my, it was my UFC debut, you know, UFC jitters and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I hadn't fought for like probably a couple of years as well. So it was, it was ring rust, you know, and they wanted me to... Uh, well, they put me up to fight, a, you know, a guy that was doing really well, you know, and I thought I could do it because my jiu-jitsu, if I made a jiu-jitsu match, I could get him, you yeah, know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, second round, like, I mean, you know, I'm all heart, and I went in, and between the second and the third round, man, it was, it was foggy. It was like, I couldn't, you know, the ref was like, you okay? It was like, Steve Mazzagati, like, you okay? I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't. It was white, you know. Holy it, it was God. like, you could, I could barely see the other guy on the other side, right? You okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay, but like I wasn't at that point, right? I wasn't getting enough oxygen. I wasn't getting getting enough. I wasn't breathing in the right way, yeah. you know. And so, uh, so uh, after my fight, my first coach actually was uh, he was a Navy SEAL and he he knew about Scott. And so Scott was a grappler, and so they he put us in touch. And, and Scott, you know, he's like, yeah, I can help. I'd love to help him out. You know, he knew who I was. I'd love to help him out. And so I'll I'll, I'll Train him for help him for his strength conditioning for his next fight, you know, and uh, and uh, he said that I, you know, I thought I wasn't breathing enough, right? Uh, you know, I thought I wasn't breathing enough, but he's like, hey, you're breathing too much, and so there's just like, there's, I was like, it's breathing and not breathing, right? right. Like what's what's there's what's the levels difference? and there's types, yeah. right? And so that was like that. I was you know going back, circling back to earlier, like that's what really opened my mind up, you know, to this world. It was like the breath. And uh, when I looked at the video, I was like, yeah, chest breathing, like, you, you know, you're not in your, your nervous system is, is too much, right? For, you know, you're not ready, whatever, mentally, whatever it was. Um, and I was chest breathing, right? And so I wasn't getting enough, you know, air, I was getting the, the, the right air, right? And so really opened my, my mind up when he kind of broke it down. He never really told me, but he wrote like a blog on our training, you know? And, uh, and I learned so much, it really opened my mind up to Damn. just this whole world, you know? And so, man, I think about, you know, you think about silver lining things or, or you know, a negative being a positive, you yeah. know, like, you know, it's devastating. It was my first loss, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a, you know, millions of people are watching on pay-per-view, 
you know, I was like, man, I was right between the main event between like George St. Pierre and Randy Couture, you wow. know, at the time, and Mandalay Bay, you know. And so I kind of, I got my ass kicked, you know. I got my orbital broken, and they, they stopped the, white, the fight in the third round. I was still moving, I was still defending myself, but I was done, it was good, you know. But he saw I was in trouble, and it was because I wasn't able to, I fought to the death, you know. <laughs> like, I, I'm, just you were breathing, like I'm, right? so much, I'm so game, I fought to the death, but I, I wasn't getting the air, right? I yeah. wasn't getting the, the, that, that what I needed, you know. Right. And so that, that was like the best, biggest blessing in disguise because that introduced me or that got my first coach to, to introduce me to, to Scott, you know. And then game changer. Game changer, yeah. It took me like, but it still took me 10 years to, to, to get there, to get to this TACFA certification in Bellingham. But the fact that you did do the 10 years and you did do your discipline levels into doing this, it changed you, you know, like completely. Like whatever was attacking your body. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I say, I say, I say, I feel like a broke record, record again. You know, but like I started, uh, you know, I started dreaming. I was dreaming, and just so many different things besides like the fat burning off the fat, but just everything just started to work better. Right, like my brain, my body. I didn't have pain anymore. Uh, just my brain started to work better. I remember I had a hard time comprehending when I would read. I could start reading and comprehending, comprehending like much faster. Uh, dreaming. I was. Dream I didn't dream for like ten years. You know. Man. And so all these things started to come back, and I knew, like, this is good, you know? And it was all, man, speaking of the breath, it was all because me connecting my breath with the, with the, you know, with the movement and having the correct structure and, like, focusing so hard on it. Nice. And that's what TAC fit in, you know, like, and that's what they do, you know? We structure, movement, you know? And uh, the quality, the quality of movement, right? The yeah, quality. Yeah. It's not the quantity, but it's the quality. Right. And really focusing on that quality of movement, right? You're really focusing hard and uh, just, you know, just I got reconnected and, and uh, you know, like I would say, like it's that like that limitless movie, you know, I took that pill and I was just I'm able to do just much more and live much more. That's for myself, but I'm able to help others do the same. Nice. It's so, almost like make your one rep in life better than everyone else's five bad reps. In life. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to to. Just get more into the, you know, have you shown me like more than mace, you know? Mm. And then like, man, I've never, I've never messed around with nut chucks in my life, you know? Really? Yeah, man. Uh, I learned it's crazy, you know, but I, I, you know, I like picked up one, just, you know, maybe once, you know, just, but I never like you know, had somebody always, oh, you know, show the technique, you know, but nobody really, you know, I, I guess it's a traditional martial arts school kind of do, do those kinds of things. Yeah, right? traditional martial arts schools definitely do that. I've, I've learned through the mace. So I mean, uh, I get a lot. Same, of same components, same principles. Yeah, same components, same same comp uh, principles that actually uh, lead to better range of motion mm. and better controlled rotations. Meaning, um, you know, I'm not. This is just rotation, but controlled rotation has a certain volume and, and a certain uh, type of integration. Mm. With the nunchuck, you can't really, you can go fast, but when you go fast, that means you understand that fast to be slow. Mm. It feels slow to you. But if you go too fast and you wire yourself into it, with the next move, you're gonna hit yourself. Or it's not gonna go where you want it to go. The person that uh, got me really into it, obviously, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee got me into a lot of things. And back in the days, every kid wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. I wanted to be Bruce Lee. And, um, you know, nunchucks was something I wanted to do, but when I was a kid, I was not good at it. You know, I just emulated. Did the uh, bow staff, that was another did one you, that- did you, did you mess around with nunchucks when you were a kid? Yeah, but I wasn't good. Right, I just, right, right. you know, you know, I just- So it was the CST and the, the CST and the- Tactic, and tactic yeah, that kind of, kind of like the, helped me integrate in my mind how this is supposed to be. Nunchucks need to be a little bit more fitness oriented and. and so you understand the conditioning system to it rather than just the mind of practicing patterns. Practice patterns all you want. The, but purpose, I, the perception, the, you're wearing enough the space around you. And right, you amplify those things with your practice. Now if you can't amplify those things with your practice, stay in your practice. But what I have is I have a simplistic system where you mm. can use them all. And it's so good because I had old women, just regular women, kids, a uh, person who didn't even know fitness or any martial art, and a very old man. They all did it the same, 
they all felt the same mm. and what guess what they tell me i feel empowered again yeah i yeah. feel like i've owned it's myself the again. it's the fountain of youth yeah yeah you view it's you know, all right stuff it's so priceless you can't you can't take that away from someone if somebody tells another person that i feel empowered and and that person just looks at the person like yeah 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 you are missing a huge thing like mm. you should be asking what is that empowerment where did it come from what did you do i'd like to join tacfit is that you know like i i don't i say like you say broken record i'm a broken record all the, all the time every day except everybody likes to play that same song mm -hmm. you know that's why i'm the broken record because they want to hear it and you know what you'd be the same broken record yeah i guess so right yeah yeah <laughs> but it's real right real is I, it's, i'm speaking from the heart and uh i know what it can i know what it's done for me and i know what yeah. it can do for others so well from the heart you're a fighter real recognize real through the battlefield you know that thank you brother yes, thank you for everything you do yeah, no and brother. looking for everything to come and it's coming <laughs>